Okay, so for our next tutorial, we're going to look at life cycle costs um, and, and possibly apply them to the International Construction Measurement Standards. So what is the ICMS? Well, the ICMS um, is similar to, very similar to the ISO uh, 15686-5 or 19686-5. Uh, um, and that provides a breakdown structure for life cycle costing. So you have your construction costs, you got your renewable renewal costs, which is your replacement costs, operations costs, maintenance costs, and your end of life costs. And then within those categories, you've got sub breakdowns and further sub breakdowns in terms of the structure. So this is what the uh, ICMS provides, or at least what the RICS provides um, in terms of a breakdown structure. I've taken that and, and I've added a little bit more functionality to it or further breakdowns to it. So I started grouping, you can see here, I started grouping um, the main headings into subheadings. Um, that is quite similar to what the RICS provide. Um, I added the further breakdown structure, which is the level uh, four breakdown structure, which is group three and group four here. And if you were doing a life cycle cost exercise, you could get down and use that level of detail or you could assign it to, I suppose, the level two headings. Again, you can use the finite detail um, that you might do in a bill of quantities, or you can use more of the higher level codes and uh, use a kind of a more broad stroke approach to this template. Um, I'm gonna show you two different ways of carrying out life cycle cost exercise, similar to what I did before. Um, you've got your yearly costs, so costs that happen uh, at uniform on a uniform basis, so costs that happen every single year. And you've got your life cycle costs that happen at regular intervals. So costs that may happen in a cycle of five years or 10 years, and then it repeats that five or 10 year cycle. So we need a way um, of calculating those costs within this template um, that hopefully can use either the yearly costs or can use the irregular costs. So to start with, um, I might just show all my levels of codes there for the moment so you can get an idea you'll notice that there's a lot of breakdown structure when you include all the low level codes um, in your life cycle cost exercise but um, i suppose the positive thing is once you've set up one line um, you can fill copy and fill down those uh, calculations or those formulas down to all the other lines so it's a matter then of typing in your costs just like you would i suppose in bill of quantities which would be unit um rate and total cost quantity unit rate and total cost so let's start um just making a few little changes to this template i've added in you can see it here it's hidden for the moment i've added in a column for real costs so this will show costs in today's money the next column which is in the template that i downloaded from the rics is your nominal costs and that's the future costs um, <clears throat> of making that payment in that particular period of time, be it five years from now or 10 years from now or every year over your study period. Um, and that should include your inflation over the course of, of, of the study period. Then you've got your discounting factor. Now it says discounting factor in the template. I've added real discount factor there um, because there's a difference between the discount factor um, with or without the inflation. So if you're including it with the inflation, I suppose discounting factor offset against your escalation factor or your escalation rate, it's a real discount factor. <clears throat> and uh, I've just put it in there for reference. And then you've got your net present value. You've got your quantity here, which I, which I think or I believe is the quantity of your gross internal floor area. And then you've got percentage costs, percentage category, um, and then percentage of total life cycle costs. So percentage of each individual cost within a category of life cycle costs. The best way to explain is to show how, how show you how it works. So you'll see that in a few moments. And then the percentage of each line or each row as a percentage of the total life cycle costs up here. So life cycle costs, if you're familiar with ISO 1968, uh, or yeah, 686-5 um, includes the overall life cycle costing category, but also includes acquisition costs, construction costs, operations, maintenance, end of life. And then as I said before, within those categories, we got categories and subcategories. 
So let's just pick um, one particular item and do it maybe for that item. And then of course, as I said, once you've got one done, you can fill it and use those calculations all the way down. As I said before, life cycle costing exercises um, seem quite daunting, but remember that once you've got your template set up, once you do it once, once the calculations are tested or road tested, um, you'll be able to use them time and time again. You can set this up as a template and your calculations, you're, all you're just doing is inputting in the actual costs as of the day, an inflation rate, a discount rate, and it should do it for you. Okay, so let's click on maybe start with a renewal item, um, something simple like uh, floor finishes. So scroll down to what category that could be in. Um, architectural and non-structural works, roof finishes, internal divisions, uh, fittings and sundries, and below that then finishes under cover, floor finishes. So to start with that, I'm gonna actually add a couple of columns. I don't know how many I need for the moment. I'll add, let's say, I don't know, five or six, click insert. Bring them back to make them a little more reasonable here. Okay, so starting with the first column, you can see there C through H, new columns. Starting with the first column, you can increase the size just a little bit. Don't worry too much about the exact sizes of this. You can format um, the document to a printable document later. Um, so let's say, for example, I'm replacing ceramic tiles somewhere down the line so I'm just going to click that back okay so in this first column I'm going to put in my replacement year so let's say after 15 years um, I replace my columns okay so that's my first column now up here you can put in that this one is a description if you want and this one is year replacement. The next item is going to be our quantity. Okay. So let's say, for example, picture pick a number out of the top of my head, 786 <clears throat> meters squared. So I'm just formatting the cells as I go along here. I'm going to right format that or right align that cell and the next one which is my unit meter squared is going to be up here in unit so that's fairly straightforward <clears throat> it's how i suppose apart from the replacement year it's how you present a cost plan or bill of quantities quantity unit and then the rate let's say the rate <clears throat> is 65 euro so that's coming at 65 i want to add a few decimal places to that and I want to line it into the center. <clears throat> Might decrease these as needed. Don't need a, a wide column for meter squared. I don't really need that wide either. So there we go. And then unit rate, let's say total. Okay, so for the moment, that's enough. Um, so my first formula here would be pretty straightforward. Equals this rate multiplied by the quantity so quantity times rate and use the cells don't type 65 times 786 because obviously when you pull that down you want them pulling through row and um, row to row so click enter and my total i leave it uh, as uh, 51090 although i could change it to um by clicking the little comma up here comma style and change it to a cost, but I might have to reduce my decimal places. There we go. I'll just keep it to a whole number rather than show decimal places on the totals, whereas in the rate, I keep it to decimal points. Now, <clears throat> I need to add a few more columns here. I know there's a lot of columns in life side costing, but as I said before, once you've set it up, um, you have it set up once. Um, I'm trying to produce a template here that you could use for anything, be it a whole life side cost estimate that include all the items in a cost plan um, or all the items um, for replacement in a cost plan and then you'd be adding obviously your operational yearly cost to that um, or it could be used this particular template once set up it could be used for just one item if you're comparing like we did before the rainwater harvesting system versus not installing rainwater harvesting system and what the two components or two options are a cost <coughs> and costs present value costs associated with each option okay so i'm going to add another two columns here 
So clicking the two columns beside where I want to add it, insert, insert columns. There we go again. The next item I'm going to add is an uplift. And I think I explained this before. I'm going to type it in as 1.1. I need to increase the decimal places. Now again, I could have my uplift up here as a general uplift of 10%, which would be 10% plus 1, 1.1 uh, in this case, and then link that cell to the actual parameter that would be the uplift of 10%. <clears throat> and thus, everywhere I got that linked, it would populate that 10%. Because for the most part, most items, when they need to be replaced, you have to take out what's already there. So it's not just a matter of replacing it like you would do when you're constructing it on the ground that's prepared and ready to go. You have to take up the existing replacing tiles or, or ceramic tiles, um, take them out whatever way you can and get rid of them. So in terms of an additional cost, there's an uplift factor there of 10%. Now it could be even a little bit more, but let's just apply the 10%. Um, and then we have our factor cost. Okay, there we go. I might wrap that text just so uh, so it shows up there and our I move that ooh, I move that blue line up for a moment so it's not in our way it's just the page break and then our factored cost is our uplift factor multiplied by our total cost so in the 15th year in today's money in, the, in this life cycle cost exercise we're going to spend in today's money now, not escalated costs, we're going to spend 56,199. We'll also spend it in year 30, because we're in cycles of 15 years, year 45, year 60, and on and on, depending on the study period. Um, now, what we have to do is we have to escalate those costs, and we have to discount those costs to get our nominal costs and our net present value. The total real cost would be, if it's a study period of 60 years, could be twice that, and then we're not replacing it on the 60th. But I'm going to do a cash flow forecast next to show you how you might populate these next cells. But for the most part, this can be applied to any row once you've set it up. For example, if I highlighted that, brought it down into the next one, I've got the exact same figures, but this could be 10, and this could be 6, 7, 5. Um, and then through a 14 or something, and it would change. Okay, so if I double click, of course, what it's done is it brought 1.1 down to 2.1, change that back to 1.1. Okay, and that could be internal wall replacement, internal, uh, or let's say painting. Every seven years, uh, maybe there's 1500 meters squared of painting and it's at a, a rate of 850. okay so as i said this is where you're doing your population hopefully when we set this cash flow forecast up all the rest will populate automatically okay so starting with this particular row i'm just going to do it in one row and hopefully set it up in a way that i can copy and paste my formulas from this row all the way through the other rows and columns um, just to signify I'm working in this row, I might highlight it as a yellow highlight through the row. Um, it just means that when I come back to it, I can come back to it fairly quickly. Um, I'm going to scroll up here. I'm going to highlight those columns I've just created. And I'm going to create a group here, a group of columns as such. So by highlighting the rows I've just created, click data, and I'm going to click group. So I've grouped those columns together um, as a kind of, a, I suppose, a set, and I can collapse them by clicking the little minus, and they're gone. And it's back to looking like the template I actually started with before I added the columns. But as I said, I can collapse and uncollapse um, those items. Um, it just gives me opportunity when I'm working on a small screen that I can see exactly what's out here, as opposed to what is here as well on the left-hand side. So down to this item. Um, so starting with um, maybe row seven here, I'm gonna insert some additional columns out to the right-hand side. Um, this first category is my escalation rates. So escalation, center line, discount, and also center line. Um, first number then, I'm gonna leave a blank, um, just to kind of a differentiation. 
the first number then I'm going to put in as comma one or exclamation mark one um, and then I'm going to pull that up, pull that across because I put that little comma in there um, before one as I pull it across it'll count it through that series of payments so I'm going to use about 50 years here what did I come to 52 delete the last two so that's my series of payments and um, that this first cash flow forecast is going to be set up for real costs um, and then I'll subsequently set one up for nominal costs and present value uh, a little bit different than what we've done before I think what we've done before is we had our nominal costs and our present values kind of calculated below um, whereas this one's kind of going across um, in another exercise I think we did it from sheet to sheet doesn't really matter and uh, the process is still the same where you're linking and you're calculating different cells based on based on a number of different formulas so that kind of sets me up there and um, so s being my first row with escalation discount and t and then um, our rest was starting after that and um, so what am i going to use for my discount rate and um, well i'm going to use a percentage format um, and use 2.25 percent say it's coming up as two but just increase out the decimal places um, T maybe let's put in 3.75 percent um, and yeah it's to two less places already okay now I could link those cells as in I could have equals click another cell that actually has my escalation rate be a quick way of putting your you know that similar or the uniform escalation rate all the way through your different rows or your through through your different life cycle costs and um, I could show you that at a later time uh, u is blank and this is my first year so this is where i'm going to in, input my first formula and um, again for doing this i probably need to show what's in here because i'm going to be using these rows and i'll start with this first year so once i do one formula hopefully it'll work i can pull it across pull it down and it'll work through my series of payments so let's start we've done this formula before i'm going to use the if and the mod functionality um, I think we did it in the last exercise so again it's good practice because um, it's something you're not just going to pick up um, or you're not just going to pick up straight away and um, you might have to do it a few times but as I said once you've done it once and it's tested and you know it works you won't have to do it again so equals if open brackets if the mod and what way did we work this before open brackets the number and the number is that first year Okay, so I have to go a little bit further up than I did in my last exercise. So that's my first number back down again. It would be handy if I freeze paint it, but um, for the moment I don't. So what's the divisor? And the divisor is my year 15 here, or placement year. So if that returns, close brackets, returns a value of zero. So if it's kind of true as such, or if 15 divided by 15 is 1, it doesn't return a number. There's no remainder left. One, 15 to 15 goes once with nothing left. 15, 15 to 30 goes twice with nothing left. But 15 into 20 goes once with 5 remainder. So that's not an easy or an even divisor. And that's what this calculation is doing. So if that is um, 0, I'm going to put in put in this cost of 56199 okay if it's false put in a value of zero so that that formula there is the same as what we used in the last tutorial now again similar to the last tutorial I need to lock some rows um, and I need to lock some columns I want to lock that row so as I pull down from cell to cell it won't pull down with it and um, so that is row seven dollar um, then I want to lock the column that houses the um, replacement year, and I also want to lock J, um, which houses the actual cost. So hopefully this will work. And then I'm going to click return. So zero is coming up there because 15 is not a divisor um, of one. 
um, it should come up as a positive in year 15, it should come up as a positive in year 30, and it should come up as a positive in year 45, um, and then the next replacement cycle is outside my 50 year period, so I'm not including that. So let's hopefully see if this works. Um, clicking the right button, pull it across, or the left mouse click button, but on the right hand side, or bottom right hand side of that cell, pull it all the way across. Oops, I don't know how far I need to go. I went way too far. I think that was my last year, so let's see. Yeah, so BS is my last year. I'm just going to get rid of what's to the right of that because that doesn't apply. So let's say, does it let's see, does it do that? I believe that's probably year 45, and it is perfect. And the other ones is year 30. And there, year 15, AJ 15, and it is. So we've that set up. Let's say, for example, I brought that down into the next one, and I brought that down into the next one, and then I highlight this series of payments all the way out to the last payment, and I brought it down to the next row. I can see, because I set this up correctly, it's populating at 14025 every seven years. So there's the first payment for seven, there's the next one after 14, and so on, and so on, and so on. I didn't change anything, the formula is doing it for me. Okay, the next thing I need to do is I need to sum my cash flows for my real costs. So in this column here, column K, this is my total real costs, or cumulative real costs. Um, going back down to the example, or the row I'm using as an example, I'm gonna click equals, and I'm just simply gonna sum the totals of those cash flows. From the first year, pull it, pull it across, holding down your left mouse uh, button, and release it on the very last payment. So that's your sum. 168,597 makes sense that it's three times this 56,199 because we've got year 15, year 30, and year 45, three cycles within that 50 year period. Okay, if I copy that formula, copy, and if I paste it down into the next cell, I don't want to paste it with the formatting, so I'm going to paste special just with the formula, and um, I get a cost of 92. 175. So again, every seven years, seven, 14, 21, 28, etc., throughout that 50 year period, um, places 14,000 in each one of those respective uh, years um, and accumulates at 198 or 98,000. So you can see that that formula has applied it through that row. The next thing I need to do is I need to create nominal costs. So I need to escalate all those real costs or those series of costs um, throughout a new cycle, a new cash flow of payments. So starting creating a space BT, um, starting with BU, if I go up, so starting in this cell, I'm gonna type in comma one and then pull that series of payments across. Ooh, gone too far again, bring it back to year 50. So there are my nominal cash flows from year one through year 50. Okay, so starting in year one, scroll down. I'm gonna insert my first formula. Now I wanna do it in such a way that when I pull it across, it works from column to column. And when I pull it down, that series of cash flow, it works from row to row. So again, we have the lock cells or rows depending on um, I suppose the cell we're clicking on. So start it. If you can remember the formula is one plus I or or whatever the rate is to the power of N. So let's start and create the factor. We've done this differently a little bit uh, in the last exercise whereby we had the factors created separately to the calculations and then we clicked on the factor and multiply it by its respective real costs. In this case, I'm gonna embed the factor in the calculation. Again, a little bit different. There's so many different ways you can do these calculations and use Excel, it's a very manipulable uh, tool. So open brackets, one plus, scroll across to what our escalation rate is, click, close.
close brackets to the power of and what are we using to the power of well we're using our first year so to the power of one so click enter and that would give me a factor which makes sense of 1.0225 so the 2.25 percent added to the first year is 1.0225 now what i'm going to do in this case is that's my factor but i'm going to multiply my factor so brackets on the outside brackets at the start i'm going to multiply that factor by the first year's real cost now there's nothing in the first year so it'll return a zero i go back and it does and if I pull that across, it may work, but I have to do a, a, a few things before I set it up. And that is to lock the certain cells. So the first thing I need to do is to um, lock the column as I pull across. I don't want it to move from column to column because it'll select the wrong unit. Um, I want it to lock to column S, which is the case in this, uh, in this uh, particular formula because that's my escalation. So if I click dollar in front of that S, dollar S91. And I also want to BU7, I want to lock the row in the next calculation because that is the row up here. And I want it to stay in the row as I pull down. So again, this takes a while to get your head around. Um, after you do it a few times, you kind of eventually get it. But it's something becomes second nature after a period of time of uh, using Excel and using different rows and columns. And then the last item here is the V9, V91. And I want to let the row flow there. And I'm gonna leave that as is because I want the row to flow and I want the column to flow as I move across and I move down. I want it all to work through its different cells. So let's see, does that work? So hit enter and then pull it all the way across. I actually don't know how far I need to go. I think I went nearly exactly right there. Maybe one, one short, we'll leave it for the moment. Um, and then, so that's, you can see escalating that first payment, the next payment and so on. And the next payment at 2% for that particular year um, and then what I want to do is I want to flow that down or bring that series of payments down. So click on the first one, bring it across. Release on the last one, fill it down into the next item. And you can see these are also in the seven year cycles, but are also escalating. So that was year 49 DK, DQ. Yeah, and Dior is 50, so I'm bang on there. Scroll down, Ooh. scroll across. The next thing I need to do is sum that series of payments to get my total nominal costs, just scrolling up. The next column is nominal payments, escalated payments. So let's sum those, or that series of cash flows, equals sum. Scroll across to the first payment. Do it nice and slowly. Okay, there we go. Bring it across. Release. Hit enter. That is that. You can see that our total real costs for that first item is 168. But those costs represented in nominal costs, in escalated costs, is significantly more. 340. 979. Let's say I reduced that escalation rate to 1.25%. That obviously would come down. If I put it in a zero, it should be the exact same 0% as our real cost because it's not escalating. So I'm going to leave it, return it back to 2.25%, and I'm going to copy Control C, do the same again as I did before with the real costs. I'm going to paste special those formulas or that formula into the next item. So again, there's my escalated costs or my nominal costs for, um, well, for the following item, for the next item, which was the internal wall finishes painting. So moving maybe up to the top, um, you'll notice that as I scroll up and down, at least going from row 91, 92, up to the very top, 
um, to see what's going on um, maybe in the first number of rows and then have to scroll back down again and um, takes a little bit of time and um, one way of kind of I suppose um, avoiding that is to freeze um, the first seven rows there so I want to freeze um, uh, rows one through six so I highlight row eight so everything above row eight I'm going to freeze I click the view tab here and drop down freeze panes so what you get is a line across um, those rows and if I scroll down that pane uh, freezes and I can basically come down as far as there and see them um, which I suppose which column corresponds to which column and um, also some more housekeeping what I might do is just so I know which cash flow um, is which start with maybe above year one there we call this the real cash flow and let's give that real cash flow some borders um, just to delineate um, from column to column so I'm going to go away, come all the way across to row 50 there we go and let's right click in that field of uh, columns format cells um, in the border tab here let's with a dotted line um, just highlight the columns um, I don't I don't have to highlight top and bottom I'll just highlight through the middle on the two sides and click OK now you can barely see it there but it's enough to delineate the columns in that kind of gray area do the same for um, what is the nominal cash flows and this I might um, delineate as some solid lines exact same again highlight the 50 columns right click format cells um, and select the line same again vertically I'm highlighting these columns um, and then I'm also going to have another series of cash flows which I'll get to in a second but that um, pretty much shows me um, certain cash flows and also freezes those panes across the top the next thing is to calculate the real discount rate um, so that is essentially um, the discount rate offset against the escalation rate as I said before in previous tutorials this isn't exactly um, the discount rate minus the escalation rate so we're using um, a formula of equals open brackets 1 plus the discount rate close brackets divided by open brackets again 1 plus the escalation rate and close brackets Put a brackets at the end and put a brackets at the start and divide by sorry not divide by minus one if i hit return i guess well it's a factor in this case i could change it to um a percentage um of 1.467 percent but i might leave it leave it as um, a factor because that's what is uh, it is called for up here a real discount factor now again if these discount rate our escalation rates change from row to row or item to item and um, I want to have used a formula in there so when I do pull it down and um, it's the same and um, I'm just gonna go back there because when I pull that down it also pulled the formatting so what I might do is right click I'm gonna copy and then I'm gonna right click uh, paste special and um, there we go paste special and I'm gonna as I showed before uh, copy the formula so I keep the formatting which is okay um, I'm making a mistake there by clicking the wrong cell Return. and there we have it and um, that essentially is the same as that it's just when I pull it down by double click it's moving from row to row from appropriate row to row now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this discount factor to calculate my net present value now I can do this a few different ways and I'm going to do it both both those different ways um, just as a kind of a double check but also um, to show you that it can be done and um, so using that real discount factor um, which is essentially my discount factor that I'm going to apply to my net present value of the series of real payments so starting off we've used this formula before it's equals NPV open brackets and you can see it's giving me a kind of an indication or a heads up as to what to use well the rate is going to be my real discount rate and then I'm going to go comma and then I'm going to select the series of payments so it's the first year through the 50th year so click that first 
pull it all the way across holding down my left click button keep going um, and end at 50 so scrolling across end at 50 and hit return and there I have um, a net present value of 110.659 I'm going to do the same I'm going to copy that cell and I'm going to paste special into um, the next one and that gives me uh, total net present value in this particular line so for painting of 66665 so that's my total net present value for each line if for example I changed my discount rate to be the same as my escalation rate let's put that in at 2.25 percent and watch what happens here my real costs of 168597 and my net present value are the same so what's happening well, my real costs are escalating up to 340,979 at an escalation rate of 2.25. And then they're coming back at the exact same discount rate, back to 168,597. So I'm just going to change uh, that back because that was just showing you for example purposes. But it's worth playing around possibly just to get an idea of how the escalation rate and discount rate relate to each other. Again, as I said, that is equal to the same, but you'll also see that the real discount rate changes to zero because they're exactly the same. Um, I'm just going to go back. There's also another way of calculating the net present value through the cash flows, just like we did for um, our real costs and our nominal costs. So I'm going to scroll across and set that up, keep going. Um, the borders are handy now because it kind of shows me um, which ones are which. So at the end of our nominal cost, quite similar to what I had done before um, little comma one hit enter um, and then pull away all the way across to what you think is I suppose 50 years and uh, let's see where I'm at oh, way too many so delete the last number there go back um, and to 50 years and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide back and um, through those columns back to the first year um, and create some columns um, or some column borders that kind of differentiate it from what's gone before. So maybe a dashed line through the middle and then either side. So vertically, not horizontally, um, and click OK. So that's the start now of my PV costs. Um, scroll back and um, scroll down uh, to where I want to go. There we go. So long row 91, as I said before, um, and go back to my first year of my PV costs. So here it is here. And we need to type in a formula here that represents a discount. So if you can remember from previous tutorials, equals one divided by uh, open brackets, one plus, um, scroll back to my discount rate, which is, I keep going, um, which is 3.75 on row 91. Click back again, close brackets, um, to the power of, and that is shift six, to the power of that first year. Okay, with that, I also want to, as I've done before, I also want to lock that row. So when it does be, when I do pull it down, um, it locks to the row and doesn't pull it from row to row so we got row seven and I also want to lock uh, the column T so when I pull it across it locks to where the discount rate is and doesn't pull it off that discount rate from column to column so it's the column that gets locked for the discount rate and uh, if I click return I'll get a discount factor but in fact what I want to do is I want to multiply that discount factor so I'm going to put brackets at the end and at the start and I want to multiply that discount factor by scroll back the first cost in my nominal cost now not my present value cost because I've already escalated it now I'm discounting it so the escalation is included in this um, at the I think it was 2.25 percent and now I'm discounted back at 3.75 percent whereas before when I took the real discount rate that had already the escalation and the discount kind of offset against each other so i was able to use the real cash flow forecast 
to calculate my net present value of that MPV function. But in this case, I'm using the nominal because I'm just using that um, actual discount rate of 3.75%. So I'm going to click the first item and hit return. So hopefully that will have set it up. Um, if I click my first item here, um, or my first column, and pull it all the way across with the bottom right-hand corner, little crosshair, and then even keep that selection selected and pull it down into the next row. Um, hopefully I'll get a series of discounted cash flows that was taken from my nominal cash flows. And you can see that they're coming down um, from year to year. So hit enter. Um, in fact, if I needed to click that just to check, yeah, it's on seven. It had pulled down and if I pulled away across, it had taken the seventh year. So all is good there. So I'm gonna click enter. I'm gonna pull that across. And what I'm gonna do is just to double check um, a few totals here. I'm gonna sum this discount cash flows and see if it is the same as what I had done previously with the net present value function. So sum this row of present value cash flows and hit enter. And uh, there we have a number of different decimal points, too many. So I'm gonna click number here and give it a little um, comma separator, maybe even bold it. Pull that down onto the next item, our next line. So I've got 110, 6, 5, 9, 11, and 66, 6, 6, 4, 53. So if I pull that back, or even just put them to the same decimal places, which is zero, um, than what I had before, I can see that if I pull it across, just to make sure it equals the other way I've done things, and it does. Okay, so the next thing, I wanna copy all those functions, all those formulas, down through all the rows after them. I can do it obviously above them as well, because I want that to, uh, to be automatic when I put in the data in the main body, I suppose, of my life cycle cost exercise. Um, so to do that, for example, if I fill that cell down, just to, sh just to show you, um, what would happen is you'd get a divisional error. Now it's working, the formulas are working, but because there's nothing in these cells, it's dividing zero by zero or blank by blank, and it's given us an error, okay? So I don't want that to happen. I could leave it, it doesn't really make much of a difference, it just doesn't look good. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little if error function. So starting with this, maybe this V91, uh, which was my first row that I calculated. So that I'm gonna keep that formula intact, but in front of it, I'm gonna put in if error, open brackets, so if there's an error, or if there isn't an error, it's gonna calculate this formula, okay? But if there is an error, it's gonna put in zero. So I'm gonna put in comma zero at the end, and then I'm gonna close the brackets, and then I'm gonna hit return, okay? So there's nothing really different between that one and that one other than the if error function at the start. Pull that, pull that all the way across to the end of this particular series of formulas, and there we go. On to the next, which is our nominal costs. That's a different formula, so I gotta put in if error. Now, once you do this once, you won't have to do it again. So just bear with me. Open brackets, if error, same again. This time, again, a zero at the end, or dash zero, or comma zero, enter. So all I'm doing is putting the if error function. Pull that all the way across, it shouldn't change anything. Um, it should be the same calculations, and we can double check that in a second. Release. And then the last one, which is our present value cost, is that keeping the formula intact, if error, open brackets, again, comma, zero. So if there's an error, put a zero in, and then fill that across. All right, there we go. And I can see that my sums is the same, so I'm good. And if I scroll all the way back to see I might got the same cost in there, and I do. So I'm happy enough with that. So what we might do is bring that all the way across, select all those cash flows, or those three cash flows, series of cash flows, release at the end, and pull down. And you can see there's no change there either, but keep on going. I'm gonna pull all the way down. I don't know, I can stop whenever, but I'll keep going, let's say down as far as there. 
So release, load of zeros um, in there. In fact, I could turn off those zeros and if it's a zero, I'll have it as a blank cell. And I can show you that in a few minutes. But if I go back up um, to where I started, there we go. Now I can do the same. I can pull that series of data up. Um, and uh, these calculations will be automatic no matter where I am with these uh, with these rows. So I'm happy enough with that. The next thing I want to do is to copy some of these formulas um, down um, to where I'm going to utilize them um, for operational costs. So let's say from H hey on has got formulas in the cells. Um, the first four or five columns there are input cells, starting with C and uh, cross through H. So um, I'm going to select maybe two rows there and uh, I'm going to copy them. And I am going to scroll down to where I'm going to use them. You could use them in any row, but let's go down to our operational costs and let's say for example cleaning so starting with h i'm going to paste in those formulas in here because i don't want to have to do them again although i could do them it's no big hassle but just if you can do it quicker might as well and click enter now those formulas have gone in there they're all zeros or the values are zeros because there's nothing in the input cells so let's change that Ooh, made a mistake there just go back um what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put it in an escalation. So what was our escalation? 0 0.0225 and um, 0 0.0375. Now I think though they were represented as percents. Um, increase the decimal place. There we go. And pull that down. So there we go. There's our percentages and there's our discount factors, a real discount factor. Um, let's start with cleaning. So maybe weekly. Um, now, the first column here is a replacement year. Well, this isn't necessarily a replacement year. It's a yearly occurrence. So let's put in one there because it's happening every year. The quantity, 7,500. So our total floor area in this particular building. And um, if you look up in the GFA, you'll see that it's 7,500. So let's clean the entire building. Meter squared. Now, what rate? Let's take something at the top of my head. 375, it doesn't really matter for the moment what the rate is, but let's throw it in there. Um, so that gives us a total cleaning bill of 28,000. Um, that's a lot. Maybe let's bring down our 0.75. Let's bring down our cleaning to about 500 a week. Again, a lot, but let's just go with it for the moment. Um, uplift. Well, we don't have an uplift when we're doing yearly costs. So let's change uplift. Let's still keep uplift in there because the column has to be uplift for our replacement costs, which is above us in renewal costs. But this one dash, let's say, the number of occurrences for these particular costs. So I'm utilizing wrap text there. I'm utilizing the same costs here, the same formulas that I had above. I'm just utilizing them in a slightly different way. I'm just going to indent that back. So weekly cleaning bill um, is 5,000. Uplift our number of occurrences here. Let's say it's 52, 52 weeks in a year. So total bill or total factor cost on a yearly basis is 292,500. So the total cleaning bill over a, what was it? A 50 year period is 14 million. Escalated up to 27 million, discounted back. Because those formulas were in there and because if I scroll across, all those formulas were already in there as well because I fill them down. I can see that it's populating the same cost in every row. If I go across, these costs should be escalating and they are at a rate of 2.25%. And if I scroll across, because I fill down all those formulas, these costs are discounting. So they should be getting lower and lower and lower per the discounted rate, which was 3.75%. Let's do a little test here. Let's change the discount rate to 2.25. Make sure it's all automated and um, our present value and our real cost should be the same and it is and as well as that that 10 million 312 should be the same if i scroll all the way across um, it should be the sum although i didn't pull it pull it all the way down but it should be the sum of those present values so let's check that and go back to the start of my present value scroll across just to make sure and um, do it a couple of different ways just to make sure we're okay 
there we go enter and uh, let's give it a, a comma and bring back the decimal place there we go so 10 million uh, 300,000 or 312,000 and are we 10 million 312,000 back here we are so I'm happy enough with that there and um, if I want to do external cleaning so external cleaning could be just the windows that are getting cleaned all right um, let's say it's a yearly cost let's say there's know, 350 meters squared of windows getting cleaned on a weekly basis that's 450 a meter squared not a whole lot and 52 weeks a year and there's those particular costs so you can see then that um, I utilize the exact same formula just by copying and pasting the formulas down all the way across those rows now I could have just copied the entire row down from above into these rows and I'd have to change the actual content of those cells um, to reflect the, IC, uh, the ICMS coding structure and descriptions. But ultimately, I don't want to have to um, do the calculations for every row. I want to utilize the copy and paste functionality in Excel to do that for me. So there we go. There's um, two good examples of um, replacement costs and operational costs. And for the most part, that's all you're going to need. Um, you need the, either the irregular interval cycles or you need the yearly cycles. There's a number of other things I want to show you um, here. Remember I said a few moments ago that if I didn't want to see a whole lot of zeros in my cash flow um, or cash flows, um, I can show them as a blank cell. So how to do that. Top left hand corner, file, down to options, click options, click advanced, um, and about halfway down, I think it's in display, display options for this workbook. Actually, sorry, it's not. It's in display options for this workbook, lifestyle costs. Um, I'm gonna show a uh, zero, Un uncheck that, show zero in cells that have uh, zero value and click okay. So nothing happens there, but as you scroll across, you can see that uh, what was zero is gone now to a blank cell. The formulas are still there. So it is still calculating a zero, but it's showing as a blank cell. So it just looks a little bit better. It just shows you the content of the cells um, that have content in the rows and uh, makes it a little bit neater than what was there before with a load of zeros. Um, a few other things, if I want to show a cost per square meter um, based on the net present value is usually the cost I want to show as a square meter cost. I would click equals, click the row, click the cell, divided by, I'm going to scroll up, divided by 7,500, which is my GIFA. I'm going to F4 that, so it's a dollar O, dollar eight. It locks to it, because when I pull that down, see it's 385, that's per that particular cell. But if I pull it down, now it's this one, but it, it has locked it up to that cell. Um, so I'm happy enough with that, click enter. Um, the other thing I wanna show you here is a percentage per category. Now to do that, I need to calculate what the total cost is for the cleaning category here. So starting with my real costs, I'm gonna click equals, sum, open brackets. And I'm gonna highlight those three cells, or those three rows, and click enter. Um, I can pull that across, and it'll have the same formula for those, for this column. And then I can copy into my net present value and paste. So there we go, net present value click enter um, and there are the totals now I can do the same if I had content in each of the other categories in the operational costs I don't so if I want to total my operational costs based on the second level headings there I'll click equals plus plus and then click on the main categories or main subcategories um, of the elements below next one click keep going till the very end so i think i've got another two or three yeah and that's my last one okay um so it's going to be the same for my total operational costs as my total cleaning costs because i have nothing in the other 
subgroups. Um, so again, I can just pull that across and that would have calculated all the same cells, but on a different column. And I can copy paste into my net present value column. And there we have same totals again as in the subcategory. And now I can put in cost per category. So what would that be? It would be equals this particular net present value cost divided by my categorical cost. Now, I think I need to lock this row to 68. I'm putting the little dollar in front of it because I don't want it to pull down into another row as I pull this down, but click enter. So I've got 21.88%. And this should be the rest. If I pull it down, 78 makes 100%. Okay, you can actually divide that by itself if you want to show it as 100%. Click it again and click enter. There we have 100%. And then this is the co percentage cost of the total. So what you'll need to do is you'll need to calculate the totals and subtotals for the entire workbook and get your total life cycle costs and divide this particular present value by the total present value to get the percentage row or percentage cost for each row. So that's a good example of life cycle costing in the International Construction Measurement Standard. Um, this isn't exactly the way you have to carry it out, but it shows you an option of how you might do that utilizing, uh, well, Excel functionality, formulas, and, uh, and so forth. Thank you very much.